Okay, here we are live. All right, Groovy. Um, yeah, Todd, my tournament here. Playing a little um, lock and load. I'm going to just do a little hour-long live game cast. We'll see if it's an hour or what. Um, this one, I wish I had a couple screens to share instead of just this one. But basically, this is Phony War. It's early war. I've started. It's turn one. It's German and French. Um, zoom out one click here. And uh, please let me know if you can hear and see and do all that stuff. Um, let's hide the pieces real quick. So basically, the Germans are here, and they're moving to these buildings here. There's rubble and wire that you'll see. And um, you'll see all the wire and rubble here. The Germans are coming from this direction, and they have to take this building. They get four victory points if there's no good order French in this building at the end of seven turns, I believe. And then they get another four points if they're not within one hex. Uh, and the French get a point for each um, leader or multi-man counter to, uh, dispatched from the game. And uh, you know what? I didn't know you could actually hover over the empty hexes to see the pieces. That's cool. So they've got an MLE or MIE 1914 gun in the top floor. And, and then in this floor, they've got a FM2429. And there's a guy on the bottom floor. There's also an event that happens if they get into that B and uh, that floor there, event A. Uh, over on this back side, there's a couple of Germans here, and then some special French forces come on. The um, Ch -ch 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 Corps Franck. Frank. You can see them there. They've got um, they've got the ability to um, assault fire and stuff, but they have another special one I have to look at. Um, mm, I think I misunderstood. Units with red movement factor can perform hit and run movement. Oh, they do not have. They may move up to half and fire and fire at any point with penalty. Oh, they do not have hit and run then. Okay. I'm kind of learning. No matter how many games I've got this, I'm still learning the rules. All right. So that's kind of the board. Let's bring the pieces back here. Um, I kind of already got a little bit of the first turn done, and I have to remember a few things about special rules about this, uh, this particular scenario. So let's kind of read the background of the scenario real quick. Um, so this is straight from the book. Near Forbach, No Man's Land, January 1940. During the period preceding the German offensive, both the French and Germans kept their positions along the border. France had invaded the Saar country but retreated after the Polish capitulation. War was then an affair of recon patrols, brutal ambushes, and coup de main on outposts. On this day, at dawn, the Germans attempted to eliminate a French advance base, taking advantage of a thick fog. Unfortunately, French Corps Franc were just returning from a night operation and joined the battle to rescue their comrades. So this is elements uh, element of 258, um, the Ockflarung Battalion, of the infantry 258th infantry division on the germans and then the french are elements of the 69th regiment um 29th division and then elements of the 24th battalion alpine corps front sixth brigade attached to the 29th division all right special scenario rules um the m3 m4 building are two levels there's wire the fog is a dense fog and you can reduce to three hexes during each rally phase after turn one, roll one d6, and the result is the, and if the result is less than the current turn number, the weather is clearing, add one to the line of sight visibility. Uh, the German player has eight fate points. So I had started the scenario and I did the fate points wrong and I forgot the visibility issue, so I restarted it. Eight points can add or subtract from any roll of any unit involving a one four four squad or one three four squad. So like, This unit here and one three fours are probably their half squad equivalents. So all these one six fours, those one four fours, can use it. But these, they have these French guys here. I have to remember to keep a defensive line here um, because these French core guys are coming on this way strong. So it's kind of a cool scenario. You got your Germans here, but in this first turn, the French front, 
the special forces come in here and start pr pressing in this way. So the Germans have to hustle it up and get in here. In fact, I need to move faster than I'm moving. So, all right. And I think that's that. I need to go and make sure you guys are hearing me, seeing me, and all that business. And if you, anybody's chatting, and if you're watching, please say hello so I know who you are. You can talk to each other and blah, blah, blah. So let me go here to YouTube. And we'll try to get a turn in or something and see what we get. And my live, my channel. Okay, there I am live. Okay. There we go. AJ Twinby. Oh, hey, man, you have a video up I'm going to watch here. You had a live play recently, so I want to watch you watch your video. So AJ's got some good war game stuff, so go check out his channel. AJ Toynb. T-O-Y-N-B-E-E. -E. He's got some good stuff on that channel. Go check him out. Well, AJ, you're the one on, so how do I sound? It sound okay? All right, let's get going here. This is Lock and Load, and it's my tactical system of choice. At the moment, French phrase is up, and so it's in alternating impulses. The French are going to just hold out and wait. I did not fire these guys down here because I'm waiting for more stuff to happen. And I don't know if that's the right move. I'm playing solo, obviously, so sometimes I roll the dice of whether or not they fire. The crops are blocking and cost two to move through. So now that I know that, uh, now that I kind of thought through it, so this is a hero here. He's got six, so he can move up to three and shoot. So he basically can move one, two, oh, it's French. So French were passing, one, two, that's five to move into that, but then I could fire. So this guy could fire into him. Um, <sighs> rubble, degrading, level one. Or I could go one, two, three, four, five, six, and jump into that. So I could do that. I could just rush into there and rush this guy up. Or I could wait a turn and go here. And he'll fire me, but I've got to cover that rubble is a lot. That rubble's a plus three. He's behind a wall and then a foxhole. I don't think that crop probably gives him any sort of protection, but the wall does. The wall gives him plus one. So he'd have a plus two modifier on him. I don't think there's any reason to go right here. If I go here, he'll have a plus two for being adjacent, plus one for moving. And of course, he wouldn't get wall protection. And he couldn't do anything after that. So I think I'm going to do that. So this guy's going to move here and go one, two. Or would I go here? I'd go, I'd go here and here and probably blocks his line of sight here. So yeah, I'd do that there. I'm sorry, I'd go up to there. So I'd go one. Two, we could probably see up there at one, two, three. So let me see. The rubble does block line of sight. It's degrading. Hmm. You can check line of sight at any time. So I've made my choice. I'm going to go there. He does get degrading of one. So it'd be one. Either way, he's going to get one. Um, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to learn the rules here, but so that's degrading as well. So if I moved over here instead, so let's check line of sight and let's go here to here and get one, two in that. So I would have moved there. All right. So this is the advantage of playing solo. So stop that. So I go down there. So one, two. So now the question is it's too degrading or I move in here and it's a plus three minus one. So he's going to fire on him. So he can see him and he's going to fire. No one else can fire on him. So he's a one. He's got a firepower of one. He's, gonna, um, he's got two degrading, so now he's at a minus one. Um, and there's a plus one for moving, so he's at zero. So he's going to roll one die. And he rolls a six, so his firepower is six. Um, he's going to defend at a four, so he's got a damage check of two. And roll my damage check of two, and it's a six. So he's at a six, so he's fine.
So I'm not really here to explain the game. Um, a guy named Gimpy Gamer has got an incredible series of videos explaining how to um, how to play. Um, I probably need to watch it over and over again. A hero is created when a one is rolled on that thing, but they do not get that. So, and it, it equaled it, so I don't believe anything happens there. Let's make sure of that, though. Yes, no effect. So he's fine. He's fired. Uh, I don't have an eye of a fire, so I go in here, right-click that, and fired. I need to make myself a little cheat sheet so I know. So that was one, two, and, of course, I'm going to move in there, three, four, five. Three, four, five, and I could move right there, six, and take a chance. There's no need to do that. Well, the question is now, one, two, three, four, five, six. I couldn't do it. All right, so he's done moving. All right, so he's moved. He's fired. All right, so French can go. French, see what I'm doing. Everyone's moved. What I change, what they do. This guy can still, this guy can still fire in them, and what they still get that uh, penalty for moving. That's kind of an interesting thing. So that does not have to be during the melee phase. So that's I always have to remember that, or during the movement phase. So I was going to keep these guys back to firing these guys, but I forgot about the visibility. So they just need to get on up here and fire. So they're going to go one, one, two, three. And then if they were there. They fired already. Could these guys fire on them? They could. So they can always fire on them if they don't get far enough. So... So, all right, these guys are going to move up here and go one, two, three. Um, again, the French will wait. And there's no need for them to fire or anything because nothing's much going to happen. So these guys, if I, I can command, I command all these guys to move. They all have to do the same thing, though. Um these guys all have to move together. I really don't want to move them as a stack. So this guy's going to move separately. He's going to go one, two, three. So I cannot move into that. So I have to use the unit there. So I can go one. Oh, but I got to remember, I need to keep some guys back, maybe. Boy, is this having one guy back enough, though? And do I need to keep this machine gunner back here to take care of these guys? I feel like I want to get up here and rush this guy. So if I go there, I go one, two, three, four, five, and I could jump in there for six and assault him. All right, so these guys are going to do this. This guy's going to move up here, go one. Can you move through that? He can't. So one, two, three, four. So here's one of those things that's hard when you're playing solo, right? So see this here? I want to move that top one, four, four in this phase all the way up to right to next to him. Cause he has, he has to go around the crops cause he can't go in here. Cause they've already got three guys in here. You can never double, you can never overstack. He can't move into here cause of crops. Let me make sure. Oh, sneeze. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Terrible. Right into the microphone. Awesome. Make sure I got that right. Make sure the crops are in fact, wheat fields are two. So that stinks. Um, double, it says double movement. Oh man. So here's the deal. Would the defender or if I were playing the French or um, would anyone fire, you know? So this is where I want to roll a die. Cause I'm like, I mean, it, it's, it would seem obvious what I'm doing, but I don't know. Who knows if someone would fall for it. So what I think I'll do is I'll move it. I'm going to move him up there. He's going to go one, two. Oh my gosh. I have to sneeze again. <laughs> Weird. Okay, sorry about all that terrible sound. Okay, I'm gonna do it. He's gonna go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Wow. How do I even get him going all the way up there? That's funny. I had him, I had him doing too many movements. One, two, three, four. Guys, right there out there in the open. How'd I get him? One, two, three, four. I think I was moving him six or something. All right. Well, anyway, in this phase, this guy's going one, two, three, four. He's moving right out there in the open. Um, one, two, three. So. I, 
I don't think I would fire. He's going to get a move marker on him. I can always fire on him later. And I know that tells me that something's happening here. So one, two, three. So I can't see him. I hate to move this machine gun. So if I move here, that's one, two, three. So maybe I'll do that. All right. So these guys are going to move up here. One, two, three. All right, so they're there, so moved. All right, well, these guys, I, I don't, I shouldn't charge those guys. I really should keep some guys back here. One, two, three, four, five, six. I really should keep these guys here. When did it say I can use the fate points? You can never use more than two fake points at one time. You know what? Let's do it. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. This guy would most definitely fire on them. So he's adjacent. That's two. He's, he's moved. That's one. So that's now three. Um, the crops are nothing. It's blocking, but there's no obviously modifier. So it's three. So as the German, I'm going to say I want to modify... Oh, it's before any roll. So he's sitting at three. So he's sitting at a four. So he's going to roll one die for four. He's attacking him. He rolled three. So that's a seven. So now for my defensive roll, do I want to use two fate points and give myself two points to start out with? So he's got a seven right now. Sometimes I like to type this in here and say attack is seven. So I remember, especially since I'm doing this live roll. So I am going to add two points to that. So I'm going to add two of my eight fate points here and say plus two. P and roll my dice in a nice high roll boy one okay so now my defense is uh, plus one so my defense is three and so I have a damage check of four all right well the guy's at seven so I roll a d6 I need I'm at a four I need a nice little roll he's an eight so he breaks he doesn't break he shakes and then I've got two fives, so I'm already at a four, eight, five. So the last guy is fine. So this guy is shaken. This guy is shaken. This guy's fine and moved. So they all moved. And this guy fired. Let's see if I can do the right thing here. Nope. And F fired. Okay. I need to write down this um, cheat sheet. So, all right. So, French phase. So, French, these guys see this here. He's in the second floor. Um, and if he's firing on this guy in here, he can see over the orchards. The wires, I don't think the wire is a problem. I need to double check that, but I don't believe any degrading is a problem when you're firing from a second floor. So he's going to fire on them. He's going to be a one. Oh, not him. Oh, he, he could fire on him too. He would get degrading. All right, so these guys, the top guys are firing at him. So he's got one for the squad, one for the machine gun. So that's two. He's got plus one for moving. So that he's now sitting at a three. He's in rubble, which is a three. So it's a three with a defensive three. So the three rolls and he gets two. So he's got an attack of five and the defense rolls and he's got a defense of that. He's got a defense of seven. So we do not need to roll any damage checks. He fired and he's good. And now this guy, the bottom guy would fire on him, but he's gonna be at a two. He's at a grading two, so he's two. He's at a minus one. He gets a plus one because he moves, and so now he's at a minus one. So he's going to fire at a minus one. So he's at five. They've already got a protection of three. So he's a five and a five. So they equal each other. So it has to be greater. So he's fine. So all that's fine and fired. I don't need to mark him like this, but I'm going to just for consistency's sake. Can anyone else do anything? 
I don't think so. So now I can go in here to the notes, and that's the note for when I save it. And so now he has, he's used one. I'm just gonna, I guess I'll just mark him as ones. So save. How would I do that? What's the best way to do that? So how about if I go one, two, I'll just count like that. So I've used two. All right, so now I'm gonna delete the admin counters. The melee can come off because so these guys moved in here and meleeed with this half squad that's up here. Oh, this one six four, so they're fine. Um, so I can get rid of the melee and do what I always do, and that's save game. Turn track. So I roll um, one dice for the Germans. And I roll one dice for the French, and I roll one dice for the Germans, and one dice for the French. So the French have the initiative on this turn. And I will save again. I don't need to save that. I'm fine. All right. So I'm not getting a whole lot of activity in the chat. Let's see how many we got watching here. We got three people watching. Ah, the OG's on. Original Grognard. All right, Devin. What's up, man? Yes, I'm not playing ATS. I know. I know. I'm sorry. So this is my last game um, of any game for a while anyway. We'll see how long it lasts, but I'm starting my year of the paratrooper. I can't wait to start until night 2019. So any games I play from now until sometime in 2019, I want to make paratrooper games. And a couple of reasons. One, because it's going to be the 75th anniversary next year of a bunch of stuff, obviously being 19 or 2019, 75 years since 1944. So, you know, Normandy, obviously, and Battle uh, Market Garden and Bulge. That's the everyone stuff. I am going to fight some Crete and some other early war uh, paratrooper stuff, but um, um, I'm doing it because of that, because of those things. And also I'm supporting the um, Lance, um, who's making a fellow war gamer who's making a TV series in Britain called Paratrooper. I've supported it via Indiegogo and I want my fellow war gamers to support him. The, the, I have no skin in the game except for that I supported him Indiegogo. But um, anyway, so this is my last game before I start doing that. And um, anyway, so, oh, by the way, the original Grognard, Devin has got a lot of great uh, video content. Um, Oh, geez, Devin, you haven't played it since I played? Oh, boy. Um, I feel bad now. Um, uh, so anyway, so Devin's got all kinds of good stuff, and he's all excited about some video game coming out. Or not video game, but some game came out that, you know, Megalopolis or something. No, would you buy? Anyway, um, he's got lots of good content on his channel, too. He's been playing Open Fire, a solo board game, kind of similar. It's a board game like this is, but he's been playing actual board game. All right, so that's turn two. All right, what do we need to do here? French get to go first. So what do the French want to do? French have a hero here. I almost wish that hero was up here. So if I want to shoot these guys in this building, I have to spot them, and I really don't want to do that. It feels like a waste. Oh, shoot, rally phase. Derp, derp. Almost skipped a step there. I rolled my initiative. Um, and now I need to roll a die and see if it's less than. So the visibility is still three. Stellaris next DLC Mega Core on Thursday. We'll be streaming that. All right. So if you want to see that kind of thing, that'll be on the original Grognard's channel, Devin. All right. So we need to rally here. So I need to roll two dice and get a seven or under. And I get it. And so he's, so that's good. So now we can add his one to these guys five. So they're at six. Got it. Nice, 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 nice. That's very good. I think I would probably wisely shoot this guy here right at these guys because they get a plus two. There's a there. He's going to get assaulted here. So the question is, does he pull out of that and pull back or shoot? I think he shoots because they've got those guys defending the building, you got those Frank Corps coming up here, it's a chance to wound a leader. So that was a chance they took, and it was maybe a bad chance. So I got start out with a three, the crops out for nothing, and I roll with that, and I get a four. So now do I want to add a fate point to my roll, because I am in the wide open, 
I just have to roll a four or higher to do that. You know, gosh, I think I'm going to use a fate point to make it at least one. I did it. Four. Perfect. So, whew. Dang. Well, I did that. So I have now used three of my eight fate points in two turns out of seven. So I'm not sure that's a good idea. But I did it. So now this guy's fired. So he is getting assaulted. I really want to shoot him to take him down a notch. But, oh, I just moved the foxhole over there. I did not mean to do it. All right, so so this so man, I could assault this guy with a bunch of people here. I could move these guys. They these guys all have to move to the same spot. Can I do I activate a hex or a unit? So I'm so leaders. I can activate units within my hex and one hex out unless I'm wounded. And if I activate them to move, they all have to move to the same spot. The question is, can I activate one unit? So leadership. 60, page 67. I'm using the new book, new rule book that came out with it. It's this beautiful, ah, beautiful is overstating it. It's a 275 page book. However, the rules are only a small part of it. It's very big font. I think it might be 12 point, if not big. It's 12 point. Two columns, very big, and lots of examples. And so lots of pictures with examples, so it's not all crazy. It covers everything from World War II to modern, so there's some stuff you don't use. You cannot be intimidated by that. Now, because I always say, boy, Squadler's got 100 and some pages of rules. Well, this has got a couple of scenarios. It's got index. I gotta go straight to the leader. Some stalling here. I'm not going to the same right page here. 67. Sorry, everybody. Like this kind of thing, I should know this, right? Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm not seeing it easily. Uh, hold on here. I got to go do something here real quick. Yeah. Sorry about that, everybody. I had to take care of a problem. All right. So, uh, leaders, blah, blah, blah. Good order leader, modify, lead troops and melee, lead troops and close assault, modify, modify. It's kind of funny. It's a bit of a blah. Leadership range. Activate. Okay, activation of leader. Can't activate units in their hex and adjacent hexes. Leaders cannot activate vehicles that are in addition to hex, and armor leaders cannot activate in addition in addition to hex. Leaders not blah, 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 blah. Okay. Leaders of combat. So then you have to go to, is it impulses? You know, this is a little weird here. To me, we should be a nice, I mean, th this they do amazing things with this rule book. So it's kind of like, yeah, I hate to say anything, because it's, but it would be nice if it run, went back to, because it talks nothing about that. And I do know that if you, you know, if you activate them all at the same time, they have to do the same thing. So it'd be nice if it was there or told you where to go to see that. So where is that? Is it just under movement? Is it under firing? Yes, we'll go to movement first, page 37. Again, this is not a big deal. It's amazing to be able to be playing this. So, um, okay, they're vacuuming upstairs. Hope that's not too loud. Carpets are getting shampooed tomorrow, so we're cleaning some stuff up.
The units in each hex, however, must move or fire together if they do either. I'll use that move. Okay. Well, so I don't have to. So if they move. So they're not going to do. So I am going to move three people. Up. So this guy and this guy. So this guy's going to move in there. They're moving in there. Whoops. And so bam. And then this guy at the same time. We go bam, bam. And now. Oh, wait. When that guy moved here. This guy could fire on him. Would he do that? I'm going to say no. Because it's kind of like, you know what? If he makes it, great. All right. So let's look at how to do assault combat. It's not too challenging. It's a ratio instead of a thing. So they have one, two, three. Three to one. You're going to add one to the die roll for the leader. And he's firing there. He, he is at one to three. Um... He couldn't fire on him because he already fired, so that's good. I would have, I think it's the right thing to do. Um, assault. There's something about assault if you're at one to three or greater. What my son's doing up there? He is vacuuming away, so that's cool. Unmodified attacks at less than one to three odds are treated as one to three and cannot be conducted against multiple units that exceed one to three odds. See melee example three. Okay. If it was greater than one to three, he'd have to choose one unit. So he can choose one unit, he cannot choose a leader, or he can choose against all of them. I would probably just go one to one and choose, well, oh, actually, I'm sorry, let me check that. I modify the tax at less than, worse than one to three, I treat as one to three, and cannot be conducting at multiple units that exceed one to three odds. Not all defending units must be attacked, but at least one must be attacked. Again, I could add a, something with a fate point, but I think I need to stop using those and just deal with it. Deal with my fate. Can I use a soft fire? Can I use coordinated? Oh, coordinated movement. Oh, crap. I cannot use coordinated movement. What's that mean? I think that's between 6.5. Sorry, everybody. You kind of... <laughs> MMCs, SMCs, and can vehicles can move together. Okay, so I could not do it with a with a vehicle or mounted. Okay, I just need to see. So these are simultaneous. Oh, does he get the one of the the? The question is, does he get the foxhole too? Probably, I would think so. I might want to add something to this. Because right now, well, anyway. Does he have to, can he attack just one to like to be able to just take out a unit? Okay, I can fire again. So this is a ratio thing. So right now, yeah, and I do to add, I do to add that foxhole. So right now they're firing at three with a one for their thing and a one for their leader and a minus one for their. Well, not a minus one, but the French get that plus one. So the French have two to their three. But now you don't count that. So it's an odds chart. What's an odds chart? How do I do the terrain? Oh my goodness, so sorry, man. I thought I had this stuff down. Maybe I don't include the terrain.
You would think that have, being in some defensive terrain would be helpful, because otherwise it'd be super easy to attack guys in buildings. So I'm reading some stuff here. No one's ambush capable. Oh, goodness gracious. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to read this fast because I know you guys are all listening to this silence, so pardon me for the silence. I need my reading the rules silence sign. Okay, so simultaneous melee combat use their unmodified and kind of firepower. I guess not. I guess we're all jumping in that thing. So I'm going to go with that right now. That seems pretty crazy, though. Okay. So it's three to one, so I have to roll a five or more on my die. Well, with my modifier, a four or more on my die to win. And the one to, I think the French will just go one to one to try to take out a squad since I get victory points with that. If I could do one to two, and I need a 10 or more. Or I could go one to three, and need 11 or more. I go one to one, and need eight or more. All right, well, the Germans are going to attack. I don't know if I have to declare that now or not. So three to one. Here I go. Roll two dice. And I roll a nine and a ten. So I got it. So now the French are going to say that. What would you do? Would you guys attack one? My son's sitting down here. Maybe I'll ask him. He's all in stats. He's all into stats now. Except we're working on a very engineering thing. Maybe I won't ask him. What would you do? What would you do, son? You have to attack. Personal. If you are one French guy and you can attack all three units at one to three odds, I have to roll 11 or more to kill them all off. I kill them all off if I roll 11 or more out of two dice. I go one to two. I need a 10 or more and I kill two units. Or I go, uh, yikes. Or I go one to one and I just need to roll an eight or more and I kill one unit. He's already dead. So who's he going to take down with him? One, two, or three? I need an 8, 10, or an 11 or more. He's already dead. Yeah. Yep. What would you do? Might as well roll it. Well, I have to roll it anyway, but the question is, do I attack one, two, or three guys? Um, My odds are... What do you think? Anybody? Two. I'm going to attack two. Here I go. Attacking two, attacking two. Okay, attacking two. I need a 10 or more. That's, that's not good. That's not good. 11. He killed, took down two units. If I had stuck with it, I would have rolled. All right. He just took out two units as he went down in a fight. So the French are ahead three to zero. Man, that's not good for the Germans. Mm. So I moved and I meleeed. Wow, that is crazy. All right. French. So I can't fire into that because there's a melee thing. I think the French just wait, see what happened. So again, I could fire these guys up into here, but I have to see them and I can't. Um, I think. Wire is a complete, it's a one. So I could low crawl into that wire. Can I low crawl in the wire? I think I can. So I'm going to do that. They're not automatically seen, but it gets me up to the wire. So they're low crawling into that. And the French are just waiting for stuff to happen here, except for here. 
Let's see in here. He's in rubble, so I'd have to spot. So he's going to have to move to get in there. So these guys are going to move. Man, you just don't spot. You just don't do that. So... This hero is going to move into melee with this guy. He's going to take a chance. I may use a fate point in this guy. So he's taking him and his weapon in there. Oh, wait, the French. Shoot, the French do have these guys down here. What do they want to do with these guys? I think he might go here. He's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Those guys could fire on them. One, two, three, uh, scrub costing thing to move into. Four, five, six, seven. This cost multiple moves. It's light woods. It's two. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Two crops are definitely two. Dang it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I think as a French guy, so as a French, Frenchy, as they say, probably derogatory, sorry. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. So we can't do that, but these guys got a leader, so I could go one, one. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I go one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to also do that and I'm going to get shot. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. A little gamey, but there you go. The Germans cannot see these guys because they are in blocking terrain. So I have to roll a two or more to see them. I feel like I need to save just in case. After this game, I'm going to go do some moving. I'm actually moving game rooms. This room is going to move into another room where I'm sitting in right now. If you're watching my videos for like miniature gaming, so I have miniature stuff I do, so I paint. My life would be so much easier if I didn't do that. But I like the 3D aspect of it. All right, German turn. Oh, well, the German turn. These guys could move in here now and get there and move that thing. So he is going to move. The guy's just going to go one, two, three. He's going to move into there. They could fire on him. One, two, three. So they do move in there. And they are now on, into the foxhole. So we can move the foxhole to the top. And that's that. All right. So he moved. I need to mark those guys as moved. And this guy... I could have marked. Anyway. Okay, so French. French is just going to keep waiting, man. One, two, three. What are these guys in here? Are they in something? Oh, they're in the open. It's going to be... It's, 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 it's... What is it? If I move... Oh, what is it? Oh, I, I was just told my dinner's ready. So, <laughs> my dinner, our family dinner's ready. So I guess I will be logging off here. Um, that's exciting. All right, so let me see real quick. Let me conduct this one guy's move, and I guess let me I'll get off here. So, uh, 
Firing units, night scenario. Oh, can I even fire on him from there? One, two, nope, I can't, so never mind. All right, so this guy's going to move. French are going to go here and go one, two, three, four, five. So they're moving there. Moved. All right, so moved. So now I'm going to go notes, public. Uh, it's turn two. And German phase. Thanks for the few that have watched. Uh, original Grognard, AJ Coinby. Be sure to go check out both those channels. Um, appreciate any comments. Uh, let me know how the sound is and all that. And we will um, go eat some dinner. If I continue, I'll jump back on and do this a little bit more tonight. I would like to get at least, I thought I'd make it through a whole turn. This game is a fairly fast playing game. Um, it's just me sitting there trying to think through stuff. So, And let's put these guys with a move marker here. So before I forget, because I go pretty strict, but I don't see something there. I do something with them. So, and move. And they all get it one. Ah, whatever. Okay. Save. And I'll see you guys later. Uh, thanks for watching.